G'day viewers, how the devil are you? This is to show you how to build a simple waste oil burner. Here you can see that I'm making this one out of an old fire extinguisher bottle, but any metal gas bottle or cylinder which is basically sealed will be fine. The beauty of using extinguisher bottles is you don't have to worry about any flammable gases in them and the metal seems to be quite thick and durable in the ones that I've used. It's not important to worry about measurements or dimensions with these things. The only important part is to keep the principle of operation in mind. What you need to do is make sure that the air and the fuel enter the bottle at a slight angle in order to create some swirling. This makes sure that the air and the fuel mix and will burn completely and also that the bottle is kept hot so that the liquid oil will vaporize and the gas will burn. As far as the inlet and outlet positioning goes, I try and put the outlet at the highest point in the bottle which is flat which makes it a little bit easier to weld in and the bottom inlet I put generally 25 to 35% of the way up the bottle. Here you can see I'm inserting the pipe that I'm using for the out inlet rather and that has a small bend in it so as to promote the swirling within the bottle itself. This is important in keeping the bottle hot and self-sustaining. To start the burners off I usually use a small amount of old oily rag and I light that up and put a little bit more oil in it to get it going. I gradually add the air and some more oil and work the bottle up so that it gets hot. Once you start seeing red spots on the side of the bottle you know you've got enough heat and you can increase the air and the oil flow from there. When starting the burners, it's important not to add too much air or oil too quick and actually overcool them. If this happens, you'll basically get a flame out and you can just let your blower run a bit longer, cool the bottle off and then start again. Once you get the hang of it, they're very easy and quick to light and don't take much effort at all. Here you can see I'm welding in the bottom inlet. Try to do a, a good job on these and don't get any pinholes, particularly on the bottom, because if you do, you can find the oil leaks out and you'll get some smoking and maybe a little bit of dribbling out below the burner, which can be messy. I found as long as the holes aren't too big, any little pinholes will fill themselves up with the residue for the oil and they tend to be self-sealing anyway. Here I'm welding in the top outlet of the burner, which as you can see has a slight downward curve. I made it this way so I can put things that I want to melt, mainly scrap metal, on the ground and I don't have to position them too carefully. I can just put them in a, a metal uh, pot or a crucible and just melt them down from there. The main thing with these type of burners is not what size bottle you use, or the inlet and outlet size of the, the pipes. It's just basically making sure that you've got a bit of swirling going on for everything to mix and to keep the bottle hot. Here you can see the profile view of the bottle. It's simply a pipe in one side at the bottom and another pipe going outwards from the top, the inlet and the discharge. The hole in the top of the bottle is where the fire extinguisher nozzle originally went. I haven't sealed this up because I use it when I'm putting in bits of rag to get the bottle preheated or it's easy to add in some extra oil or even bits of wooden sticks which I also have used to preheat the bottles. Here I'm drilling the hole in the inlet where the oil goes in. I use a bit of metal uh, pipe here, either copper uh, water pipe or brake line in this case, just to keep the soft plastic tube away from the bottle, which gets quite hot and would probably melt it or cause problems. The pipe is merely sat in the hole uh, and can be removed. There's no pressurization or nozzles used in the feed. 
it's just basically dripped in mainly by gravity from the tank which I use a ball valve to regulate the flow. Here you can see that I've got the oil feed in place and I've also attached a blower from a car. This blower didn't prove to be very effective. It was rather weak but I have used other ones which are much better. Normally I use a 240 volt blower which uh, allows for maximum output but the 12 volt blowers are handy in that you can use them anywhere and don't have to run a power lead. Here the burner has been started up and probably running about 10 minutes which has allowed the paint to burn off the outside. It's probably only running at about 10% output here but as you can see by how quickly this old paint bucket heats up there's still a lot of heat. It was probably pumping out about 30 to 50 kilowatts in this shot. The blower was, as I say, a little bit uh, low powered and that helped cause the pulsing. And also that I had a little bit too much turn on the uh, inlet which was uh, rectified by welding in a piece of flat pipe in front of it which slowed the swirl down and added to the, the swirling of the uh, mixture, I should say, of the air. The main thing to keep in mind with these is not to ha how big the inlets and outlets in the bottle is, but just make, basically make sure that you keep an amount of heat in the burner itself so the uh, oil is, is vaporised. You can control the output by the amount of fuel and the amount of air going in and they do have a lot of regulation. This burner will run anything from 10 kilowatt to over 350. Hope this gives you uh, a better idea on the construction of these burners. They're very simple and easy to make. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below and click the like button if you found it helpful. Thanks a lot.